What is up guys, welcome to another episode. As you can see, today we are sandblasting and powder coating the subframe. We have a very cold day in Michigan, so I'll try to make this quick. Uh, so I'll be taking the subframe to the shop for sandblasting powder coating. They said that they will not take anything which has a rubber on it, which means these rubber bushings or differential bushing. I'll have to remove these. As you can see, I already started doing it the old school way, burning it out. And then I found out that I have this tool from Z1 Motorsports uh, it's called a bushing removal tool. So basically this tool will make this process much easier and faster, but I will still have to burn something out. What I will be also doing, uh, as you can see from the title, this subframe is good for daily driver cars, not for drift cars. So I found some spots that will require reinforcement. So I'll be cutting some plates and welding these plates to the subframe to reinforce it. This is how the tool sits on the subframe. And now simply by spinning the nuts, you will rip the inner sleeve out. And there is a bushing. Alrighty guys, so one more to go. This is the differential bushing and we can start a fire. As you can see guys, all the bushings are out, but I'm keeping the metal sleeves. And the reason behind this is you can remove the metal sleeves with the removal tool, at least the one at the differential bushing. But I'm keeping the metal sleeves because I'll be welding certain areas as you can see here. You can use this as a reference if you decide to do it. And by welding, I'll introduce heat. This could deform the material if the metal sleeve is removed. And the way that I'm keeping the metal sleeve in here, I will be heating the area but not deforming it. So after the welding, I can pull the metal sleeve out and then put the aluminum bushing in without any effort. Or at least I'm not gonna be forcing it inside and damaging the aluminum against the steel. Okay guys, so as you can see all the areas are prepared and now uh, let's make a quick stop at Home Depot to get all the steel plates, cut them and weld them together. As you could see, we have been using a flex core welder. That means the welds are functional, but they are not looking that pretty. So I'll have to grind out these areas today before going to the sandblasting shop tomorrow. And also I need to remove the sleeves after the old bushings before going to the shop, because as I prepare the subframe today, that's gonna be the looks of the subframe after I get it back from powder coating. I will start with the sleeves first. I already removed one of them. You basically just cut one groove through the entire sleeve and then just chisel it out. So I'll do this for all four remaining and then I will move to the welds. Okay guys, so that's two sleeves and I'll have to do the other three and then I guess I'll have to move the party to the garage for grinding because it's getting dark and I'm losing light. And that's all for sleeves. You can go check my Instagram. I made a post how to remove these without burning the rubber. And now it's time to grind these areas to make it look a little nicer. Grinding this plate is actually pretty tedious. It's gonna take a long time, so maybe I'll make a time lapse. You can watch it on one side then you can imagine how it works on the other sides too. Guys, I'm really stoked about the result. I used this flap disc to smooth out everything that I have grinded with the grinder. Just look at it. It's looking so good. All good for the sandblasting and powder coating tomorrow. So I guess I will call it a day. I'm pretty tired, so I'll continue tomorrow from the sandblasting place. And welcome guys at the sandblasting shop. It's pretty busy over here. A lot of noise from the forklift, so I'll just go over here so I can talk. Uh, I dropped off the subframe two, three days ago for sandblasting and today we are gonna powder coat it. Hopefully they will have some spare time to show me the entire powder coating process so I can show you how it's done. Alex agreed that he would explain the entire process. So Alex, if you don't mind, can you tell subscribers how it's done, yeah, basically absolutely. the entire powder coating? Um, I'm Alex Carroll. I'm here from uh, Michigan Sandblasting and uh, Powder Coating. Uh, I'm the, the lead powder coater. 
Um, this is the subframe that we got down from Sandblast uh, earlier uh, yesterday. And uh, what we did is we hung it up here with hooks. Uh, we blew it all off, went over it with scuff pads to make sure that any other extra contaminants were removed from the part, any uh, you know, paint transfer, sand, grease, anything like that. We went through, cleaned it off real good, blew it off. And then uh, what we did is we made sure to mask everything, as you see here, here, anything that is threaded or that we don't want painted. And then all of the threaded holes, you got some here, 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 and here. We plugged all those to make sure that those threads don't get painted. Because um, obviously if you paint your threads, you're not going to be able to get your nuts or your bolts back on in there. Mm. So, and then uh, right now she's ready to hit with paint and that's what we're about to do. is applied we can put it into the oven and bake it. Guys there is literally like 200 degrees in there. Correction 450 degrees. Alex explained it to me why it has to be so high 450 degrees that's a lot. Yeah that's just so that you can get you know the, the parts in the oven up to the proper temperature for the powder coat to cure. Uh, with, with most powders unless it's a low cure powder you're going to want to have it up to 350 degrees. Once yeah. it hits 350, you hold it at that temperature or above that temperature mm -hmm. 15 to 20 minutes, yeah. and then that's when it's fully cured. Okay, so we'll be back in half an hour, guys. So I suppose now you have to check it for any imperfections, right? Yeah, right now we're looking it over for, for any imperfections. This is the first coat that we put on here, and I'm, I'm seeing a few of them, like in this little corner here. It looks like we have a little bit of a Faraday up in there. It looks a little bit light. We want to achieve 100% coverage so that this part does not rust at all. Um, and uh, here at Michigan Sandblasting Planetary Powder Coating, uh, we try to have the highest standards and the highest expectations for our work so that we can provide our customers with the highest quality. Um, so what we're going to do with this is uh, we're going to end up scuffing it down and then we're going to hit it with a second coat so that we can hit all those uh, little light spots and get rid of some of these imperfections in here that we're not happy with. And uh, after that, recoat it and bake it out again, and it should be good to go. And back at my garage again, guys. Uh, I got the subframe back from Alex yesterday. As you can see, he did awesome job. The paint covered literally every spot of the subframe, even those tiny spots that he mentioned in the second coat. Also, these spots after the welds, they became a little greedy after we sandblasted them. At least you can see how much rust was eating through the subframe, but paint covered it all perfectly. So I can say that this part's gonna stay rust free at least for next five years. Also guys, I'm really stoked on how the reinforcements plate turned out. As you remember, the original subframe has tiny holes in here. I'll post the reference picture in here. And these plates will just add the extra rigidity the subframe needs when we're gonna take it on the truck and drift it. Especially when we insert the aluminum bushings in the subframe, also aluminum bushings in the differential. I'm gonna be showing this in next week episode. Since this episode, I went through it very fast. I just removed the bushings. So don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the tiny bell next to it. So you're notified when I upload that video. As I said, next week, it's gonna be about how to remove the bushings and how to install solid aluminum subframe bushings. So I hope I'll catch you in the next video. One more comment, if you're looking for sandblasting place, powder coating place, and you're local to Detroit, I'll put the link to Alex's place to the description so you can hit him up. Thanks guys for watching and see you next week.